I'm Christine Ballard. And I'm Melanie Karasmaniotis. And welcome to Art and Up. This is the place where creatives connect, cultivate and support each other's artistic journeys. Today we are talking to the lovely Teresa Small. Yeah, so Teresa is a contemporary landscape painter. But that being said, I'm going to ask Teresa to elaborate on that because it's more layered than that title. So Teresa, you were always a creative person, were you, when you were starting? Um, I believe so. I've been painting since about uh, being 12 years old. I uh, went into evening art classes at age 13 and it's been something that I have regularly sort of done and practiced for about 15 years now. Um, in saying that though, that is, I believe, like a uh, maybe the way that I really develop the, the painting technical side, but as far as the creativity goes, I would say that I've always uh, had a thought process that's a little bit out of the box and always jumped on anything that is um, making or sort of solving problems in interesting ways. So yeah, I'd say, always been quite creative. <laughs> yeah, so for, I've known you for quite a while now and um, I, I definitely have seen your journey evolve and you're definitely a, a risk taker, but you do then stay with these, you know, these principles and values and, and morph more toward the side of the traditional or academic. Um, can you elaborate in terms of how we would describe you as a painter? Yeah, um, so as a painter, I think... Um, I'm always drawn to capturing things in quite a realistic sense. So as you can see by the painting behind me here, it's pretty realistic as far as the landscape um, and also the figures within that. Um, to sort of expand on being a landscape painter, especially this is something that I've been quite interested in the last year, um, is the way that I can create stories through um, the symbolism of objects and also the incorporation of figures within that landscape and that space. And what I mean by that is you would look at the painting and not only see a realistic depiction of whatever it is, um, but I want the, um, the placement of the figures um, to hold a sense of curiosity and for the audience to look at it and think, oh, I wonder what that person is feeling, why they're in that position, what they're looking at, and for those figures to be a source of connection to the audience. And um, so I'm not really sure exactly how I'd say this, but it's landscape, but incorporating yeah, symbols and figures to, to hold a narrative and to tell a story within that space, which is what I've depicted. And, and when, um, at what point in your journey did you decide this is my full-time job, this will be my career as an artist? Uh, it was about five years ago I made the executive decision to pour everything into uh, my art practice. Um, it was coming out of a few different, um, I guess, uh, routes of study. I first studied nursing and didn't feel totally aligned with that. And then I went into secondary education. Um, and it was in my third year of my secondary education degree where I had this epiphany. And that epiphany was along the lines of I've always um, deeply connected to art. I have loved painting. It's something that I think is quite in instinctively me. Uh, and then I made that decision and thought, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep an open mind and work hard at making that a reality. So yeah, five years ago was the pivotal point. <laughs> so Teresa, where do you make your art? Do you have a studio, studios? Yes, I, I do actually. And in fact, it's quite an exciting uh, month for me because I have just moved my studio from my garage at home to a real commercial space in Hornsby. So I am um, sort of have a lovely warehouse room um, in, in Hornsby at the moment. And that's where I operate um, from. Oh, we'll, we'll definitely be um, putting that down the information in, in as far as contacting you. But what about, what about planning um, your art? What do you have a plan like from A to Z? I do actually. Um, I'm quite a organised type of person and quite a quite a forward planner. So when it comes to creating art, I do like the idea. Well, I look at it as creating a collection of art, um, 
And so I'll usually start off with brainstorming about um, some sort of insight into a connection or inspiration that I've felt in a particular setting. So for example, with my upcoming exhibition, um, a wonder of soul before creating that collection what I did firstly is think okay well what is it that I want to share with people and um, what message is it that I want to share so at that stage it's lots of writing lots of researching um, thinking about my personal connections and how that can translate into an artwork and how my personal connections or insights um, can then be used to connect the audience into that world or into that sort of message. So there's the brainstorming stage. Once I've done the brainstorming stage, um, then I look at my actual practice and think, okay, well, what kinds of compositions can I use? How can I use elements of art in like colour and uh, you, what kind of figures I place in and all that sort of stuff. So I look at ways that I can use my mediums to then um, create or sort of amplify that message. Um, and then I go through a bit of a research stage again. So I'll look for books and other artists or articles or philosophies that do um, relate to that particular message. So at the moment, I'm reading um, two books that really uh, are in line with my sort of my mission statement or my um, sort of the outline for this show. Those are one of the books is The Art and Science of um, Shirin Yoku, which is uh, the Japanese practice of forest bathing. Now, I know that sounds really strange, but yeah. what it is, is that it's a practice, it's a belief system, it's sort of scientifically proven a little bit on how um, your connection to nature can increase your like happiness and well-being. Um, and it's sort of, it's a different approach to the same underlying mes message, which is um, connecting people to, to the natural world, to, you know, the outdoors. Um, so, yeah, so then there's the research stage. Um, and then once I've done that, I sort of pick out all my reference pictures, um, assess them, look at how they'll fit together. I buy all my canvases, I arrange them in my studio and think, oh, okay, that can go here and this can go there. And I look at how they talk to each other and um, work as a, as a group. Um, and then once I've done that, I then start painting. And then the painting process, um, one of the things that I will do as well, especially with this collection of work, is to really help immerse myself into that feeling and that, um, that space, I'll often play ambient soundtracks of whatever scene that I'm painting. So I'm painting a rainforest at the moment. So I'll have it playing in my studio, um, you know, the sounds of the Dane Tree rainforest. So there'll be bellbirds and whatnot um, going on too. So um, yeah, it is quite immersive. It's, um, yeah, I really try to channel what it is that I am working on in the breaks between like my painting like say like a lunch break or whatnot I'll usually um, write or like read um, and really stay totally in that in that mindset and then when the day's over then I get out of that <laughs> mindset <laughs> but it is quite immersive so yeah that's that's what I do. So you're a painter primarily uh, Teresa what paints do you use what materials do you use to produce your works? I uh, use oil paints. Um, I uh, oil paint on canvas. And as far as what kinds of paints I use, I always strive to use the highest grade oils because I love the pigment intensity. And as far as the techniques that I use, I um, build up all my paintings in series of uh, probably about four layers. The first layer is always um, quite an opaque covering of, of paint and then I build up consecutive layers of transparent paint um, like a traditional glazing kind of a technique. Oh, fantastic and how do you schedule your time like how do you how do you plan a, a day of painting or a, a corner of the day of painting? Um, I live my life out of a very thick daily planner um, <laughs> and that daily planner is, is here Oh, um, the Philo facts. Serious, <laughs> to call it. Serious. It has tabs and all, all other sort of, you know, it's, it, yeah. So um, at the beginning of the week, I usually plan out what paintings I'm going to work on when. Um, and yeah, set time aside for it, schedule it in. Um, yeah, plan it out really. <laughs> so Teresa, do you ever hit a flat spot? 
Is there a day where you've got it all planned, it's all colour-coded in the book, <laughs> and you go, ah, no. What do you do? Yeah, there's definitely days where, um, you know, there could be external stresses that are playing on my mind and my brain might be somewhere else thinking about, you know, for example, like, you know, different restriction changes or whatnot. And distractions. Well, distractions, absolutely. Um, and in those times, what I find that I do, um, I think because I have that practice, I have that outline, it's just a matter of kind of continuing on with it. Um, where I find motivation or like say creative blocks or whatnot can be quite an issue for me is at that planning stage where I'm brainstorming. Mm. If I get them at that stage, it's a matter of needing to go back to, I find spending time in nature very inspiring. Um, I am also quite a spiritual person as well. So I might do like, you know, a tarot reading or something like that. And that can help kind of bring me back on track too. So I look at things like, okay, well, can I change my physical world by going out in nature, mental, whatnot, to kind of help fill my cup. Um, outside of that, if I'm at a different stage, like for example, if I'm in the painting stage of my work and I'm struggling with motivation, um, I just kind of have to have a cup of coffee, suck it up, go through it, and then wait for that motivation to come back. And usually I'll change my playlist to something of what I'm feeling. So if I'm angry, I listen to metal and <laughs> um, things like that until I can kind of come back to, to that um, place of totally it being in line with what I'm doing. And usually motivation, it if I do lose it, it will only be momentarily. It could be for a day. It's very rare that it will continue on for much longer than that. But clever that you have that structure in place in terms of that file of facts. Um, all those tabs, I mean, that's very indicative of how you run your brain, uh, very organised. Um, and it would appear so on social media as well. Anyone who's seen Teresa's social media, she's very much on top of things. How do you keep on top of things but keep to that, you know, painting schedule? Um, with social media, um, what I usually do with that is um, I'll spend, like, when I'm in that creation um, phase, I'll usually have my phone creating time lapses or recording content. Um, so when it comes to posting on social media, I'll just... I mean, the content that I've created could be all within one day, but then I'll just post it sort of within a week or something along those lines. Um, social media for me, actually, I don't plan it as much. Like I might plan the creation of content in what pictures I take or time-lapse recordings I make. Um, but, yeah, it's just about, I guess, being regular with the way that I post things. For me, social media is um, can be quite a distraction, so I really try to limit my time with it and try to be as, like, efficient as possible when I am on it because I'm definitely a sucker for just spending mindless time scrolling through Instagram and stuff like that. So <laughs> Do you use a, um, an app to schedule your posts? Uh, I have trialled using a few different apps to schedule posts. Um, it's sort of funny. By looking at how organised I can be, I can be very unorganised in other areas. And I think in social media that, that it does come through some of that time too. So, yeah, um, I don't really use an app. I have tried it in the past, but I just sort of think, okay, well, usually at the beginning or the end of the day is when I'll make a social media post. Um, and that's just creating that habit. Okay. So, Teresa, what's one of the hardest things about being a painter that you find for yourself? Um, I think making a composition that really connects your audience to the message that you're wanting to convey. Um, I think being confident in your choices of composition as well, because I think that decision-making stage is the hardest because I might come to a decision and then the next day I look at that decision and think, oh, what are you thinking? Like, that's great. Like, that's silly or it doesn't work as well. Um, so I think that can be the hardest part is making those decisions when it comes to planning and, and um, the composition of things and how that relates to the audience. Mm. What's the most exciting thing about being a painter? 
Um, the reactions I am able to get from people, being able to see people's like, oh, wow, that's awesome, or being able to share a sense of beauty with people as well. So I think it's being able to see the way that my art um, affects people who look at it. I think that's the most exciting. And what do we have to look forward to in the trees a small journey? Um, well, I guess a lot of painting. <laughs> Um, I think moving forward, one of the things that I'd love to start to do is um, create larger bodies of works um, and sort of, yeah, just continue making lots of shows. As far as like long-term goals too, um, I would love to be classed as an investment artist at some point in my art career. Um, outside of that, just being able to get a lot of um, people to see my art, I think, and being able to have as many people as possible connect to those sort of feelings of, of beauty and, and wonder and awe and inspiration that hopefully it can um, create for people. Yeah, I'm very excited for this next collection. So, Teresa, in the meantime, before the show, where can people find your artworks? Where can we see some of your stuff? Instagram is probably the best way to look at my um, body of work. So you can find me at Teresa Small Art, um, all one word. Um, Instagram's best. Otherwise, you can also have a look on my website too. On my website, I've got my full portfolio of all the paintings I've ever done. Um, and that is teresasmallart.com. So check those two places out. And yeah. Excellent. We will be listing those. And thank you so much today for being with us and sharing part of your art journey. And we look forward to catching you up on both social media and at your website and yeah. in person very soon. Better get, let you get back to it in the studio. Finish those paintings. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> Thanks you. a lot, Teresa. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.